uh, Ben and Luke exploring what it's like to be the, the son of, you know, the Grand Master of, of all fighters in the galaxy. It's a pretty tough, pretty tough shoes to step into. And I think Ben is, done, is doing it in a good way. But he's also, as a, as a teenage kid, he's much more than a teenage kid. I mean, he's been to the dark side and back. He's seen things that I hope that very few teenage kids really ever see. And so, it kind of exploring the relationship of being a famous son who's done some terrible things and seen some terrible things to a famous father. How do you deal with that kind of celebrity and that kind of power is something that that I enjoy working with a little bit in the abyss. So on the topic of, of exceptional and, and, and interesting teenagers, uh, Christy, you basically got to establish uh, the star of, am I saying that right? That's right. And um, can you talk about her and also, you know, with, with dealing with established characters is one thing, but how do you package her up and then kind of hand her off to the next author down the line, which I guess would be Troy? Well, going into this, I knew that everything was going to be shared. There wasn't going to be anything that was going to be, this is mine, you can't play with it. So um, I wanted to birth a character that uh, Troy and Aaron would also find interesting to work with, would also be able to find new things that I didn't yet know about her. It's kind of like getting to know somebody. She's developing through this series. Um, the whole idea of the, the new Sith that we haven't seen was just wonderfully exciting stuff to get involved in. And uh, I was lucky in that I was able to be the first one to start dabbling with the culture and, and bringing that to life. Um, I like the star a great deal. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing her grow because she's been very, very sheltered when you look at, at what she's experienced. She's never left her world. She's had this mindset that she's always going to do and be something. And suddenly everything's gotten turned upside down. It's like a slow, snow globe that's been shaken up. And um, I've had a chance to read this, and I've enjoyed it very much. And um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to be seeing what you're going to do. It was, it was interesting to, well, first we all, when we had the initial story meeting, we had kind of said, OK, we need to bring in you know, this teenage girl, um, Sith girl. And it was pretty obvious from the get-go that it wasn't going to happen in book one, and it wasn't going to happen in book two, because Aaron and I are old guys. <laughs> and, and I'm really glad that, that we made the, the uh, wise decision to have Christy designer because I think she did a really great job coming up with a character that's intriguing and has lots of room to grow and, and some very human traits, but it's also got a lot of um, grit that, that I had a lot of fun playing with in Abyss, and I think we're all going to have a lot of fun playing with as, it, as the series continues. So speaking of this, you know, unknown sect of Sith, Sue and Shelley, can you talk about what Lost Tribe of the Sith is and, and how that came about? Uh, have you all read the two online stories that John Jackson Miller wrote? Yes. Are you aware that there's these two e-novellas available completely for free on StarWars.com, Amazon, and the Sony <coughs> e-book store that tie into, uh, in a way, uh, to the fate of Jedi. Right, it also ties in a bit to the novel Cross Current that's coming out. Um, so you'll get more insight into those Sith at that point, but basically they were stranded on this planet that was not technolo technologically advanced at all, and lost contact basically with the rest of the galaxy and developed along the lines of their own Sithiness. They um, employed the people on the planet, the, the Aborigines that were there, and just move forward from that point. You want to ask more? Yeah, just they were completely out of touch. Um, it was an unknown remote planet, and nobody found them at all. It was like a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So they really evolved differently, and that's very kind of fun for us because we have to make them Sith, but we want to make them a different type of Sith. But they still have to be basically dark, and they have to, have, you know, they came, they they came from a core of, of the original Sith back in the. the Thousand, you know, thousand years old Sith, not the, not the uh, Darth Bane, um, two at a time only, one or two ones. So um, we let them evolve. What happens if you completely, completely isolated? Obviously, your new culture is going to evolve, and um, 
when, when they eventually come out at this time, um, they will find, anybody encountering them will find out that they are Sith, but they are like no Sith they've ever encountered before, which is um, a conundrum for everybody involved. So I think we're going to open this up uh, to questions from the audience. Uh, before we go down that path, there's just, you know, understand that that dark path that will forever dominate your destiny. Understand that occasionally we'll be able, well, our answer will be, well, you know, we can't get into that. And it's not because we're here to frustrate you, it's because these things are still in development and, and we don't want to spoil anything uh, too early. We, we are here to frustrate you. <laughs> but uh, I do have a, a general, uh, because I, I, I want to anticipate a question that might come out uh, regarding uh, Blood Oath, the, the Elaine Cunningham novel that was uh, previously scheduled to come out and has since kind of lost a home on the, the publishing calendar. Um, what happens often is, you know, in our interest to give, keep you in touch as, as to all the developments that are happening in publishing, uh, we'll show you covers, we'll show you story synopses, we'll show you titles, uh, you know, very early on in development. And that means things can always change further down the, down the road. So we, every time we show you a new book uh, cover or a new book title coming out, the dates are always kind of tentative, and that's kind of where this, this book is right now. It, it has yet to find a uh, proper home, uh, so it's, it's kind of postponed indefinitely, but it's not canceled, and we're, we're still trying to find the right place to uh, for that. And, uh, so with that said, you know, sorry if I just killed half a dozen blood oath questions, but um, <laughs> let's start, well, let's start right over here. I guess this is for, uh, for Danny. Uh, I used to love Raising Young Jedi Knight trilogy, and I was really pleased of how you developed Ray Hart Blue. And from the little sit up that we had at the end of. Uh, sure, what really happened there? Let's keep going. The <laughs> little sit up that we had that uh, opened it appears Raynar is returning. How has Raynar been for the last 10 years since you've been locked up? Well, first of all, I think we just had a supernatural hint about it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, just, just to repeat the question so everyone could hear, it's, you know, there was a... How has Raynard progressed over the last 10 years? Right. Last we left him, he was both disfigured and he was psychologically dead. So the question is, yeah, what, what's been Ray, what's Raynard Goldman up to? But, well, uh, if you've read the, the preview chapter, it kind of hints at what he, he's been up to. Basically, he's been sitting in his cell trying to put all the pieces back together. Um, of his mind, you know, because he got pretty messed up being the, the head of the, the uh, colony. But will we see him, like, going out and trying to be a little more... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to see a lot, lot more, at least a little bit more of Ragnar. I don't, I'm not, like, he's not going to be the next hero of the series, but, but he's, I think it's safe to say he's going to play a larger part in it than just appearing a couple of times in, you know, in the chapter. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's going to be a very interesting character. Uh, I'm, um, I always kind of had a, a soft spot for him. He was originally supposed to die in Star by Star. Um, but I got to that point, the body count was just so high, and, and I enjoyed him. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I had enjoyed him quite a bit from, you know, the Young Jedi Knight series. That's one of my favorite Star Wars series, by the way. So, um, I enjoyed him there, and the time came to, to you know, do the deed, and I just couldn't do it. So I put him on the ship and sent him off. Um, and I'm kind of glad that we did that because you know it led to the whole Darkness trilogy, and, and you know, I think he's going to come back and be a continuing character for a while yet. Yeah. Uh, right in the back. Will there be more Lost Tribe stories? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got two so far, right? We've got uh, Precipice and Skyborn. We have another one scheduled to come out, um, I guess, I don't remember right now. Oh, when, when, the, when the Backlash comes out, which is book number four. So how much are you taking the legacy comic series into account in your stories that you're telling now? Like, are you intentionally trying to drop hints and set things up that would explain how we get to the universe? We would never do that. <laughs> yeah, so the know, question is, are, are we kind of laying pipe for the future Star Wars Legacy comic series? In, in some ways you have to, but it's also such a great distance away that we still have a few generations yeah. that we can play with to get them there. And it's 
too early to draw big 